Well, before we sit down, please don't sit down. Uh, just uh, if you be so kind of pull out your notes. For those of you who have notes or if you need notes, raise your hand and an usher will quickly get to you if you need, if you need notes. But would you please open your Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 12 and verses 22 to 23. Matthew chapter 12, <clears throat> verses 22 to 23. Once again, if uh, you're here for the first time, Welcome home, welcome to church this morning. Uh, really believe God has a word for somebody today. If you're in the room, it, it's, it's for you. All right, if you made it here, it's, it's for you. And so, uh, Matthew 12, 22 to 23. <clears throat> if, if you have it, say, I got it. I got it. Woo, that was good. If you don't got it, say, I don't got it. I don't got it, okay, okay, all right, all right. That's improper English, but that's all right. Just one more time. If you've got it, say, I got it. All right. Hope you get it. <clears throat> you guys ready? Here it goes. Here it goes. Then one was brought to him who was demon possessed. Oh, my God. Pastor, I brought my friend today. Why? I thought you was going to behave today, Pastor. Just, just stay with me. Don't, don't go nowhere. Just. Then one was brought to him who was demon-possessed, blind and mute. And he healed him. So that the blind and the mute man both spoke and saw. And all the multitudes were amazed and said, Could this be the son of David? Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you for this atmosphere of power and glory. Thank you for these moments in your presence that change us from the inside out. Allow me to speak your word in such a way that it's tangible and comprehensible for people to understand and those both young and old, God, that can understand and grasp your word and let us draw closer to you through your scripture, Lord, do something. Speak to somebody. Transform somebody. Let somebody's heart turn back to you today, God. Let your power be so manifested in this place that signs and wonders and healing and provision and deliverance happens, God. We're not here to be entertained, God. We're here to be transformed. So speak your word, God. Speak your word that your people are listening in Jesus' name. Somebody give God one more big praise. <clears throat> you may take a seat. I'm going to teach a little bit. Um, two very important things. The enemy had a hold on the man that we just read about. There's two important things that the enemy had a hold of. He had a hold of the man's vision and he had a hold of the man's voice. He couldn't see and he could not speak. Nevertheless, the power of Jesus heals the man by driving the demon out. And I want to talk to you today about the power of Jesus. Because although we, we are in a, in a world and we're in a place where we don't talk about these types of things too, too often, I think it's important that a lot of the circumstances that happen in our life are not natural. But they're spiritual. And I believe that if we can get a hold of the things that are spiritual, the natural things will automatically adapt to the healing. And so in this text, we see that a man is without a voice and without being able to see. Now, this is one of the particular verses that actually, you know, most, most uh, miracles, it was either he was mute or he was blind. But this one got, got double. He was mute and he was blind. 
I believe that the reason why God brought you here today is because you're getting ready to enter a season where your vision is coming back. I wish I had a church this morning, but I believe your voice is coming back. I believe that the things that the enemy was distorting, God is going to touch, God is going to heal, and God's going to drive out some things in our lives that aren't letting us get to where God wants us to get to. I believe God brought you here to reestablish men with vision, women with vision, men with a voice, women with a voice to make a difference in this world, in this community. Come on, somebody's getting ready to get your vision back. Your family's going to get your vision back now there's two particular things that are that 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 were shown to me through the scriptures here now the bible says that the man was a uh, demon possessed now I, I, I know we're not comfortable with these things but just stay with me for a moment uh he was he was demon he was demon possessed right possessed yeah now in order for us to understand what this means, we've got to go just a little bit deeper so that we understand fully the problem this man had. The problem this man had. Now, uh, the, the, this word right here, demon possessed in the Greek, in the Greek is demon. Demon, the, the A-I is taken over by the E. Demon, but, but it is not possessed in the Greek. It is exercised, exercised. In other words, the demon was exercising his body and, take, and, and was taking residence in there. Now, if you don't understand that, I want to go a little deeper. Let me teach a little bit. I'm going to teach a little bit, then I'm going to explain, then we'll preach real good, okay? You guys good? So this is the Greek, the Greek terminology for demon possessed is to to be exercised by a demon but in modern translation of english this is this is translated to influenced ah uh, here we go in now so you understand that word better influenced by the a demon this means that somewhere down the line the man was influenced in such a way that it took his voice and it took his speech. This is important because many of us are here and we're saying, well, I don't understand what that really has to do with me. I can see and I can speak. But please don't ignore the fact that we live in a world of influencers. Oh, y'all quite it. We live in a world of influencers. And what the influencers want to do is teach you to see what they see and speak what they speak so that you can eventually believe what they believe. So this man, ah, this man was influenced in, by a demon to take his voice away and take his vision away. But I've got good news for you today. The power of Jesus showed up to remove every demonic influence that was over his life. You're getting it now. You're getting it now. You, all of us here are influenced by somebody or something. Everybody here is influenced by somebody or something. And for some of you, you've become so influenced that you can't even recognize what God originally designed for you and for your life. Your marriage doesn't look like what God said it was going to look like. Your children doesn't look like what God said your children was going to look like. Your finances don't look like what God 
said it was going to look like. But I'm here to let you know that the Jesus that showed up that day is here today. And every demonic influence, I'm preaching better than you're responding now. I'm preaching better than you're shouting now. Every demonic hindrance over your family, every demonic influence that's not letting your marriage live right, that's not letting your children live right, that's not letting your finances live right in the name of Jesus. God brought you here because you about to get a new influencer and his name is Jesus. Healing is coming to your life. Healing is come. Some of you just need a sound mind. You need a sound mind. God is saying you've been influenced by demonic oppression but today is the day you get set free. I'm going to give you five seconds of my preaching time. I don't got too much time to go through this, so we're going to have to do this quickly. Give him a praise uh, because Jesus is about to drive every demonic influence out of your life. The English term for possess is influenced. See, when we first started reading, you're like, I'm, I'm cool. No, nah, but the truth is, we all are influenced by something or someone. And the point of an influencer is to get you to believe, talk, walk, dress, do everything they do. And he got so tied up in the influence. Oh, you've got to be very careful who you allow to influence your life. Because an influence... A, 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 a demonic influence will always drive you away from God. And, and the influence, if, if, if you think about it, it, it'll throw everything at you. It'll throw, it'll throw fame at you. It'll throw power at you. It'll throw money. If, if you just start doing this and start talking like this and becoming this, this is going to come and this open door is going to happen. And all of a sudden you've got people in influence, in places of influential positions, opening doors for you. God never told you to walk into. <laughs> And Jesus, Jesus saw the man who was influenced by something. And so number one, uh, you, you have to understand today that, that although we live in, in, a, in a world of influence, I've got good news for you today. And the good news is found in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. You ready for the good news? Here it is. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me today and it has anointed me to be hope for the poor healing for the brokenhearted and new eyes for the blind and to preach to the prisoners you are set free i have come to share the message of jubilee for the time of god's great acceptance has become i'm here to declare that by the power of jesus christ everything in your life is about to change today this ain't for everybody but if for somebody the devil's been messing with your family the devil's been messing with your home the devil's been messing with your money I'm here to declare it is the year of Jubilee it is the moment of it is time to get set free if anybody needs freedom I'm going to give you 10 more seconds Stir up some faith in this place. Now, number one, number one, I got to go quick. Number one, number one, the power of Jesus will not leave you in the circumstances that you're in. The power and the influence of Jesus will never leave you in the condition that you are in. There are some things, there are some things. See, you have to understand that being blind and being mute in that Bible times was normal. They didn't have Rosetta Jones. They didn't, the, what is it, that Rosetta, Rosetta Stone. 
It ain't Jones, it's Stones. Sorry, Mrs. Jones. We didn't have Rosetta Stone. They didn't have, they, they didn't have uh, sign language. They didn't have speech therapy. They didn't, they, didn't have, they, they didn't have any of that. So being mute and being blind was something normal. They would just exile you from the community and put you in a community and put you in a place. It was normal. Everyone say it was normal. See, see, because, because, because broken families is normal. I said with people in counseling, Pastor, I'm not the first divorce. I'm not the last one. It is what it is. So the devil is a liar. We've normalized some things that God isn't okay with. I just, it's just, you know, I, I got to sleep with her with her before I marry her. It's just normal. Got to try it out. Like you try out a car. See if I like it. If I don't like it, then I can switch. You see, we laugh, but the truth is, is that it, it, it's a normal. It's normal. I can, what do we do on Friday nights? You, you, you remember, we were waiting for Friday. Whew, what are we doing Friday? Getting lost? I ain't coming home till Sunday night. Disappear. It's normal. But when Jesus showed up, when Jesus shows up, he makes you realize there's some things that, are, that you're cool with that he's not cool with. There are some things that he, that you're okay with, that God is not okay with. This is why he will never leave you in the condition that you are. He loves you the way you are, but he refuses to keep you the same. There are some things that seem normal and okay with you that are not okay with God. And you need to understand that it doesn't matter how difficult it looks like it'll never change because it's always been this way and it's always been the years and it's always the same cycle. You need to know that there is no demonic influence that can resist the power of Jesus the Christ. The Bible says that it is the anointing that breaks the yoke, that breaks diabolical cycles the things that you think are more this is just how i am this is just how it's always been this is how it's gonna be the devil and his mother-in-law are liars and i'm here to let you know that there is no power in hell or out of hell that can stand against the power of jesus christ he'll never leave you in the is there anybody that has been changed by the power of Jesus in this place he will never leave you he will never leave you look at what John 10 10 let me calm down I'm trying to teach 10 10 John 10 10 look what it is the thief has only one thing in his mind the thief the enemy the devil the demonic forces the influence only have one thing in their mind he wants to steal he wants to slaughter and he wants to destroy that is what the enemy this is why the enemy has flooded social media this is why the enemy has flooded the YouTube. This is why the enemy has you there. This is why he's trying to influence you. Why? To steal everything that God has given you. But I'm here to let you know God, the, G -G, the Bible says, but Jesus said, I have come. I have come. He came but I have come now. He came once, but I have come now that I will give you everything. Watch this. In abundance. Help me read. More than you expect. Life in its fullness until what until you overflow 
she, the power of Jesus will never leave you in the condition that you are in. Never leave you in the condition that you are in. And, and, and what I love about this, I don't want to, I can't spend too much time here, but, but the Bible says that the, the beginning of the verse starts, and it says that they brought him to Jesus. They brought him to Jesus. You have to understand that people who influence you to get closer to Jesus are valuable. Whoever invited you to church today is precious. Anyone who is trying to take you away from Jesus is a demonic influence. Anyone who leads you to deeper things, in Je they're precious. Anyone who's trying to divide your family is influenced by a demonic force. And you need to know how to identify the people in your life that influence you and bring you to Jesus. As opposed to those who are separating you from Jesus. Because they're precious. So I want to take a moment. I want to take a moment and give God thanks. For every person who spoke to you. Who formed you. And who led you to Jesus. Let's take 10 seconds and give God praise. Some of you it's your grandma. Some of you, it's your mom, it's your dad. Somebody else's faith brought you here. Somebody else's prayer. And we're all a result of somebody else's prayer. There was some uncle, some aunt, some, uh, some cousin that was praying for you, still praying for you, because you're still kind of thinking about it. There's some friends uh, that are in this building that say, you've got to get to church with me. Let's take 10 seconds and give them praise. Give God praise for the people who have influenced us to get closer. Somebody, get, they're precious. They're precious. They're precious. They're valuable. Number two, number two, I got to go quick. Number two, the power of Jesus. Here's his, the power of Jesus will restore your vision. It is vital that we have vision for our life. It is vital that you have vision for your children, that you have vision for your marriage, that you have vision for your finances. It is vital that you have vision because if you don't have vision, then the enemy will influence and impose its vision into your life. But when the power of Jesus comes to your life, it will restore the way you see things. Why is it important for you to have vision? Proverbs 26, 29, 18. You guys good? You with me? Yeah, 29, 18. Watch this. Where there is no vision, no revelation of God and his worth, the people are unstrained. Where there's no vision, you go wild. You're bored. You just do random things. No vision. That's why you're always caught up in drama. You got to have the dopamine has to hit somewhere. So if you don't have drama, you create it. I can, I can see when, when people have vision, they don't have time for drama. Their life is too big to deal with small things. People that make a big deal out of small things are living a very small life. But people who, who got big vision, they ain't got time for little things. People without vision are unstrained. There, there's, no, there's no boundaries. There's no disciplines. There's nothing to look forward to. They, they, people are unrest. But happy and blessed is he who, does, who keeps the law of God. It is, it is necessary for us to have vision. And one of the things we need is we need God's vision in our life. You don't, you don't just need like the goals. Those are great goals. And you got your five-year calendar and, and your five-year program. And that's, that's, that's wonderful. I had mine 10 years ago. And don't look nothing like what I had. 
But when the power of Jesus came, it changed my vision. Look at what 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says. This is, whose minds, the God of this age, watch, woof. This is what the enemy, this is what the, this is what this man was going through. This is what this man was going through. It says, whose mind, the God of this age, has blinded, who did not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. One of the reasons why the enemy wants to take your vision is so that you never see God's fullness in your life. So he influences to impose his vision into your life. <laughs> but when the power of God comes, it removes everything that was in front. Let's keep going, let's keep going. Second Corinthians, here's the answer. Second Corinthians 3.16 and 18. Nevertheless, everyone say nevertheless. So, so there, there's, there's, there's the God of this age who has come to blind your mind and blind your heart. Okay? It says, but nevertheless, everyone say nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Woo! But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as the Spirit of God. The Lord. This is why the enemy doesn't want you to have vision because desire comes by what we see. I'm, I'm going to say it again. I'm, I'm going to slow down. You only desire what you have seen. Let, let, let me. When Joshua and Caleb were sent to go spy the land, they came back with a report to Moses and they told Moses, Moses, the grapes are big. The rivers are flowing. It is the land of milk and honey. It is ours. But Moses listened to the report of the 10 other spies. And the reason why Moses never desired it the way Caleb and Joshua desired it was because he was never exposed to it. Let, let me break it down. You never knew you wanted that new car until you saw the new car go by. I, I, want, one, I want one of them. Can we go a little deeper? You never knew, knew you wanted that, that female or that male and until you saw her walk in the room like, mm hmm Oh, yeah. No, brother, that was not me. It was, it was all the Holy Ghost. Stop it. Stop it. Your flesh cried out, mm, hallelujah. And you desired it. Oh, yeah. Marketing companies spend billions of dollars to get the attention of your eyes. Because if you can see it, you'll desire it. And the reason why the enemy will influence you by demonic forces 
is so that you never see what God has for you. Because if you could never see what he has for you, you'll never desire what God has for you. If you never see a good marriage, watch this. If you never know what a good marriage looks like, you'll never desire to have a good marriage. If you don't know what a family unit looks like, you'll never desire a good family unit. If you don't know what it is to, to be able to create wealth, you'll never desire to create good godly wealth. But when, but when the power of God comes I said when the power of Jesus shows up uh, every demonic influence uh, that's not letting you see your future as to what it's supposed to look like uh, every demonic force that's keeping you veiled the Bible says nevertheless uh, the veil is removed uh, so that I can see the goodness of God I declare you will your eyes will see the goodness of the Lord uh, in the land of the living give them praise because you're getting your vision back all right okay, okay. all right check with your neighbor to make sure he's all right Just tell him can you see now tell him can you see can you see now see why the enemies see the enemy oh you watch always yeah this this is why you got to be surrounded with good people you you want to know what a good marriage looks like get around some people that got a good marriage you want to know what good godly, a good godly husband looks like? A good, good godly uh, woman of God? Get, get around what a, a godly family looks like. And when you begin to see that, you'll begin to desire that. Because all you've known is brokenness. Because all you've seen is, is violence. Because all you've seen is demonic influence. But when the power of Jesus comes, he begins to introduce you to people who are healed, who are whole, and walking in holiness. And when you start doing this and becoming this... You start to, is there anybody desiring the goodness of God over your life? All right. Number three, the, the power of Jesus. I had to put these together because it would have been too long. So the power of Jesus will restore your voice and your belief. The power of Jesus will restore your belief system and your voice. He will restore what you believe and he will restore your voice. Look at what Romans 10, 10 says. It says, for with the heart... For with the heart of a person believes in Christ as Savior, resulting in his justification, that is, being made righteous by being freed of the guilt of sin and made acceptable to God. And with the mouth, <clears throat> he acknowledges and confesses his faith openly, resulting in a confirming and confirming his salvation. The first thing God does is he changes your belief system. Because then after you change your belief system, you'll change your speech system. I'm going to say it again. When he changes, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house today, man. When he changes your belief system, he changes then your speech system. 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, whose mind, I'm sorry, the Bible says like this. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Yet we have the same spirit of faith as he had. Watch this. Who wrote the scripture. I believe. Everyone say, I believe. I believe. Therefore, I spoke. I believe. I believe. Therefore, I spoke. You can't speak what you don't believe. So he'll change your belief system. God brought you here. To restore your belief system so that your speech system can also change. Because power, the power of death and life are in your speech system. But you can't change your speech system until you first change your belief system. Because if I, got, if I can change my belief system, I can change the way I talk. And if I can change the way I talk, then my world can change. So that I can speak what he said, and then I can eventually see what he said. Why is this important? Why is this important? This is important because everything in God's, everything in God is voice activated. <laughs> you thought Siri was the only one that was voice activated. You thought Alexa was the only one that was voice activated. Baby, let me tell you like this. God designed that from the beginning. Everything in God is voice activated.
Can you say that with me? Say, everything in God is voice activated. Say it one more time. Everything in God is voice activated. Say it one more time. Everything in God is voice activated. What does that mean? When, you're, when your believing gets right, it will change the way you speak concerning everything. That's right. Why? Because there is a sound to faith. Faith has a sound. Faith talks a certain way. Faith talks the promises of God, not the thing you're seeing in front of you. Everything in life, everything about God is voice. This is why the demon had him influenced to shut his mouth. Because he knew if he starts believing God's promises, he'll start talking God's promises. And if he starts talking God's promises, he'll start seeing God's promises over his life. The power of Jesus will restore your belief and your voice. Faith has a sound. Faith talks a certain way. If you keep confessing, if you keep your confessions aligned to the word of God, no matter what the circumstances are, if you're saying what God is saying, you could never be wrong. How many of you like to be right? All of you aligned. We all want to be right. How many of you like to be right? I like to be right. You know how you can be right? Keep declaring God's word. Every time you declare God's word, you can never be wrong. Keep doing. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. You guys okay? You got one more. Okay, we got time for one more? I still want to teach you a little bit. I still want to teach you a little bit. Okay, so the power of Jesus will never leave you the way you are. The power of Jesus will restore your vision. The power of Jesus will re restore your belief system and, and your voice. Here it is. Here's the last one. The power of Jesus will restore your praise. <laughs> this tripped me out. It was really good. The Bible says at the end of the verse, once... Jesus had set him free and he drove the Bible says he drove the demon out that's that's another thing the way demons work is they're like they're like squatters they live in residencies that don't belong to them <laughs> All the real estate people were like, whoa, I get it now. And the Bible says that Jesus, it uses this word, healed him. Healed him. Right? Is that what it says? Read the notes. Please don't let me lie. It healed him, right? The Greek word for this particular part of healed is he drove him out to drive out. So if we put it in the original context of what Jesus did, he didn't just heal his sight and give him speech. He drove out what was causing the problem. So he, it, it drove out, it drove it out. You understand? That to drive something out requires, this is not a passive word. How many of you know to drive something out is violent? It ain't passive. The problem with people is that you keep being real nice to things, you need to be driving out. You keep entertaining things, you need to be rebuking. You keep cuddling things, it's all right. I don't want to offend uh, it. It's my mijo. I want to be nice. Meanwhile, the enemy is influencing. 
But Jesus didn't play games. He goes to the core of the problem and he drives it out. Then they make reference. Here's what it got interest. Could this be the son of David? Now I know what they were saying. Could this be the Messiah? They saw what he did and they said, maybe this is the, the Savior. But there's, if we dig it just a little bit deeper to why they actually said this, the son of David. Why, why would they say that he was the son of David? Oh, here's what I learned. There was only one other place in the Old Testament one other place where this word was used drive out there was only one other place and it's found in the first book of samuel chapter 16. the bible says i'm gonna paraphrase it you can read it at home the bible says that saul was being tormented by demons and he asked some of his servants is there anybody here that can play some music to relax me because I'm feeling anxious and I'm and I'm being tormented by these thoughts and the servants said we know a guy who's in the courts already he plays the harp and he has a good reputation and he's pretty good looking too maybe he can help you and the Bible says that they, they, would bring, they brought David into the palace to begin to play for Saul while Saul was being tormented in his mind. And every time David would begin to worship God and praise God, the Bible says that the demons that were tormenting Saul were be, would begin to be driven out of the body of Saul and he would receive healing in his body and in his mind so what is this making reference to that when the power of Jesus comes it restores the way you praise and you worship when the demon is driven out you can't sit there like a bump on a log cross your hands and just be entertained because when you think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for you my soul cries out hallelujah i used to be influenced by demonic forces but when the power of jesus came it drove out every diabolical influence and now i got a praise in my mouth anybody got a praise in your mouth Anybody given set free? Uh, you can't sit there. You gotta make oh magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt uh, his name uh, together. Listen, stand to your feet, stand to your word. I'm done, I'm done. When the power of Jesus comes, it drives out every influence. And it restores a praise in your mouth. So just to end this thing today. Acts chapter 16. Yeah. And verses 25 through 26. The Bible says, and, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed in the middle of the night and sang songs of praise to God while the other prisoners listened to their worship and look at what it says next and suddenly a great earthquake shook the foundations of the prison all at once every prison door flung open and the chains of all the prisoners came loose now understand this uh, this is why the enemy wants to keep your mouth shut so you don't praise him because your praise is not just for you but for everybody else that's around you 
no 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 here's what i'm trying to say you you need to praise at the volume of the miracle that you need you need to praise at the volume of the miracle why are you getting so loud because i need a miracle baby not a little miracle i need a big miracle so i'm gonna give you right now a few seconds to give god a praise at the size of the miracle that you need i declare prison doors are gonna get opened i declare visions coming back i declare your sight is coming back